I'm going to read a letter to you today from a mom who feels horrible. She says, what's even wrong with me? Um, I feel like a horrible mother. I cannot stand being around my child after coming home from vacation. What should I do? Let's talk about this. I want to help you as well because vacation time historically is regression time. Do you know the feeling of having these high expectations of relaxing and finally getting some time off? But also deep down at the back of your mind, you're fearing this vacation because what if it ends up in tears and tantrums and picky eating and you end up giving in and just serving ice cream or all the foods that you've decided you wanted to remove to get your child to a better place, less symptoms and more independence. Don't worry, we got this. I have some tools for you and some tips for you because there are some simple things that you can plan your way out of to avoid this regression during vacation or coming back. There are foods, actions, emotions and traumas in you and the child that you can avoid and I want to give you these tips and steps so that this year you don't want to feel like you need a break from the vacation. After being on vacation you need a vacation to get over it. So you're not alone, this happens to everybody until you understand these reasons why it happens and what you can do to protect yourself from it because regression is part of the autism turnaround process, let's just face it. But there's a difference between regression that's breaking us and, and, and giving us this feeling of hopelessness and regression that's actually letting us understand what's going on on a deeper level, healing on a deeper level, and then move to a better outcome. So let's do it, let's dive in, and let's see how we can get you on vacation without regression and tantrums as much. Okay, let me read you this letter. Hey Ninka, sorry for bothering you, but I wanted to ask you something. So I've been trying my best every single day trying to be a good loving mother but I'm honestly finding it so hard right now when it's when he's being hard and intense and he is the autistic child. I find it hard to want to be around him because I nearly struggle to even like him when he do he does things that I absolutely hate. I feel like the world's worst mother because I don't even want to be around my son. What's wrong with me? Do you know that feeling? Because I remember that feeling really well. I arrived home from vacation Monday evening. We did have such a lovely time together abroad as a family and then there were really a, a few hard moments with my son. He was a bit all over the place a few of the days and symptoms were intense. We got through it though but I know there were moments where I could have handled things better myself. So I guess this could all be coming from being on holiday, out of routine, not, in, not eating as well, not sleeping well, the usual. That inner voice starts to creep back in then, telling me I'm a bad mother, that it's my fault that this happened, my child will grow up to be a bully because of it. And then testing comes when we have some lovely times together and get on great, but then symptoms are heightened and he go and attacks the baby uh, and it happens when the baby is around and I feel like he really doesn't like the baby at all and this is exactly what I wanted to avoid so do you know that feeling where you want to be a bad mother suddenly you are just feeling so angry because your child is doing things that you hate and then you regret it afterwards and you're thinking is this my fault let's remove the guilt and just acknowledge we are all human in a fallen world and we will all make mistakes regression will happen to everyone there are things that we can start to catch and change and realize both when it comes to our own role in this foods lifestyle choices emotional things and how trauma ptsd trauma around being a, an autism mom but also childhood trauma in our own lives play a role in this so this is really interesting. First of all, I want to say that regression happens throughout a turnaround process. My child's symptoms like stimming, sleepless nights, eloping, screaming, picky eating, and not developing speech, aggression, um, sensory issues, sleeplessness disappeared from 2004 and 2008. And regression happened 
all the time and every time it gave me a chance to analyze and understand why and adjust accordingly. So regression happens because of epigenetic in insults, so things that happen in the environment and food and things that we are exposed to. They happen for nutritional reasons, they happen for spiritual reasons, and they happen for because of, of emotional and dynamic-based reasons. So before we talk about this, I want to just say that as a mother, and this mother, I love her so much, and uh, we are working together on this. She's in my community. She's also supported by other moms who are going through the same process in the turnaround membership. And that's a piece of work that takes months. It's not a quick fix, but we support each other through that. And I give the moms exact steps that I used to turn my child's symptoms around. And then we have these setbacks and regressions. What I want you to understand is that when regression happens and when we feel resentment and anger towards our children and we see a situation where we go on vacation and there's a lot of ice cream and we feel like they want ice cream and there's no real gluten-free alternatives or dairy-free alternatives or whatever and uh, Bedtimes just t tend to slack and we don't want to battle around this so we kind of just let things happen. And then when we come back or when we come back to the hotel, we get this extreme reaction of the tantrums. And I want to talk about your role in this and why this happens subconsciously. So when you're an autism mom and you have stress, you're in fight and flight because you have a child and you're afraid that this child will never be independent in the future, you've had a lot of tantrums and screams and worries and conflicts and family conflicts already. So you are already in a heightened state in your nervous system. You are dysregulated in your nervous system. If on top of that, you have grown up in a family where your parents weren't really safe, you had to predict when is the next crisis going to happen? Maybe your parents got divorced. Maybe they were addicts. Maybe they were just not really mature. So you had to be the adult. You had to predict when is the neighbor argument going to come. And you had to be the parent to your parents. That's very normal, actually. Um, that's an unsafe and super dysregulating environment to grow up in as a child. And a lot of moms with autistic ch children, interestingly, have this type of childhood trauma, myself included. If you are already a bit overwhelmed and you feel like I need help implementing this, I need to walk in your footsteps, Ninka. I just wanna say I'm not a doctor, I'm not here to diagnose or treat or anything, but I can be there with you. I can be that older sister who's been through all of this and now have a son who lives independently and have none of the symptoms left. And if that's something you're interested in, you can do one of two things. You can go to barefootautismwarriors.com and download one of my free gifts that automatically brings you to my email list and you'll hear from me every week. You can also just reply to one of those emails and we can talk, we can connect about what's going on with your child and what might be broken and missing that we might be able to come up with a plan for. You can also say, hey, I want to send you an email right now. I want to get started. I'm at point of no return. I've tried everything. My child's, I don't have time to wait. And you can do that. Just send me an email, contact at barefootautismwarriors.com, contact at barefootautismwarriors.com and just write, I need help and I'm there for you. Back to the podcast. When that happens, two things happens on the back burner of that. One is that when we're in fight and flight, we don't like change. And so even if you are in a process where symptoms are changing in your child and in yourself, which is the case for this mom, her child has already lost a lot of symptoms. She has improved her stress. She was in a terrible state when she started. She's so much better now. But when things change too much, you go on vacation, you feel better, symptoms start to change. Subconsciously, your brain, the amygdala in the brain, which is like the warning a control center of the brain that will make sure that you don't re-experience uncomfortable feelings or trauma just like you've done in your past. That part of the brain when you're in fight and flight and when things are already stressful and dangerous, the brain will say we don't need more changes here, it's already dangerous because change to a 
to a nervous system that's dysregulated and stressed out and in fight and flight. Change equals danger because you're still a jungle creature. So your, your body will think that change can mean, okay, there might be a lion around the corner. <laughs> there might be something dangerous here. So let's maintain as much safety, as much environment that we know as humanly possible, which means subconsciously you'll try to maintain autism and symptoms and chaos and conflicts because that's what you grew up with maybe or that's what you're used to as an autism mom. So the brain will subconsciously sabotage your intention to get your child to a better place. So maybe you decided we're not going gluten-free, we're not eating glutamates anymore, we're not eating uh, processed foods because we want to turn symptoms around and we want to remove the triggers that are most obvious. And then when you go on vacation, because there's all this change happening and you're already stressed, without even noticing it, you're allowing your child to have ice cream or have toasties or have whatever the child wants because that subconsciously you know that that's going to cause tantrums and chaos and that will maintain this dysfunctional familiarity that is actually your safe zone right now. So that's something to just notice and be aware of. It's not your fault. It's actually your self-preserving, self-protecting stress mechanism. So that's issue number one. Another issue for those of us who grew up with childhood trauma and unsafe parents or immature parents is that because we are used to conflict being dangerous like I grew up in a family where there was a lot of arguments and it ended up with me having to move out really early and feeling like I was the parent and I was responsible for my own safety from a very early age I was actually a child so so conflict and chaos and anger does not feel safe or did not feel safe for me for a long time until I learned how to heal that by being able to sit with anger without feeling threatened. Because anger was linked to conflicts between my parents, which was linked to, in my amygdala, me being kicked out, losing my mom's love, losing my dad's love, and being on your own. You might have similar conclusions, but whatever stress, fight and flight, and childhood trauma state you're in, it causes a dysregulated nervous system, which causes you to avoid conflict, numb out or suddenly get angry out of the blue because you lose emotional control, you lose the ability to make good decisions. That is also linked to the part of the brain that needs to be calm and the part of the nervous system that regulates so that you can make good decisions and you can control your emotions and you can remain calm in stressful situations. So when we are avoiding conflict, or we are in reaction mode, or we are numbing out, what happens is that we let the child decide. Some red flags here when you are flatlining here is that you just say, oh, well, he wants candy or he wants ice cream. So I am just letting him, let him, letting him do what he wants to do. And that actually is unsafe for the child. So it means that because you're in stress, because you're in trauma, because you're in fight and flight as an autism mom, you abandon the leadership and you say, well, he wants candy, he wants screen time, uh, he doesn't want to go to bed. And if you let that happen and you don't step into leadership in that situation and you're afraid of conflict, so you don't draw clear lines and bound set boundaries, it's actually very unsafe for the child because the child instinctively, instinctively knows that you cannot lead and so the child takes over that responsibility. So first of all, the child tests you, is this really the case? Do I need to be the parent here? And so they amp up the regression and the, the, the anger and the frustration about lack of leadership. They have to test you even more and they take over the when you let the child decide what you're going to eat, what you're going to buy, what you're going to do, the child becomes a parent. And that's a very dysfunctional dynamic and it's unhealthy for the child and unsafe for the child and it creates more conflict. So interestingly, the more boundaries you set by clearly defining before you go on any vacation, I am in leadership when it comes to my child's turnaround process. 
and foods, actions and lifestyle choices that we make need to be in integrity and in alignment with the choice that I have made to turn symptoms around. Meaning I'm not going to eat or feed my children or buy or invest in things or allow things that actually make symptoms worse. And I'll get to what those are so that you can avoid them before and after vacation and during. Um, so when you are in leadership and you choose that and you say no when you mean no and yes when you mean yes. Yes, there might be a quick flare up and anger in your child. But it will be less persistent over time the more the child realizes she actually means it when, she's, when she says yes and she sticks to her boundaries. And when we don't do that, children tend to keep testing us and pushing up against the lack of boundaries and step over the boundaries that are not there. So you becoming clear in your leadership and you learning that it is safe when anger comes up in your child. Many of us cannot handle anger and aggression in our children because when we grew up, it was linked to danger or addiction. Or when we're in fight and flight as an autism mom, we read that as danger. And so if we don't calm down the nervous system, if we don't know how to heal ourselves, and if we don't know ourselves really well, we won't allow our children to test us like every normal healthy child would. And that means that they grow up with a fear of anger and with a, a doormat instead of a parent. And that means that they cannot be safe with their own feelings and expressing them and testing you. So they take over and the childhood environment becomes safe and dysfunctional because you need to create a container for them to test you, to express anger and disappointment without you then ooh, backing off and saying, oh, but, but then have an ice cream because we don't want all this conflict. Does that make sense? So the more clear you are on what's my values, what are the rules here, and then say maybe we will eat uh, an ice cream after dinner and I'll talk to you about why the food choices are so important and how and when to eat certain things to minimize regression and tantrums after this point that I'm trying to make here. So be clear, have your boundaries, set them beforehand and state the rules so that there's, not, there's no negotiation because that becomes unsafe for the child and it creates more conflicts. And then Notice and actually investigate your childhood trauma and get your nervous system to a really good place. And we'll get to that in a moment too. I hope that really resonates with you. What are some of the food and lifestyle choices that you need to know about to give yourself a calmer vacation and avoid exacerbating symptoms like aggression, tantrums, eloping, anxiety, sleepless nights? Here's something that you need to know. Most children are undermethylated before they come into the turnaround process and before that's balanced out, meaning they are high histamine, low methyl, and these causes a lot of the symptoms that we call ADHD or uh, autism symptoms like the aggression, agitation, anger, and, and, um, and tantrums. So it would be a good idea for you to plan before you go and plan that you go somewhere where you can have choices of food and where you avoid snacks that are high in histamine, but also low glutamate. So histamine is because when you have low methyl, you have high histamine levels. This is why some of these children often deal with eczema and allergies as well. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to diagnose or give medical advice. This is just strictly educational for you. But things with a lot of yeast, things with a lot of histamine in it, and I can link in the description below for a sign up for you to get a food list and a list of excitatory foods that you want to avoid during vacation time so that you can navigate this a little bit better. Glutamate, just as a rule of thumb, is all in all processed foods like snacks, chips, crisps. It's in, uh, histamine is in yeast, it's in probiotics, it's in broth, it is in collagen. So many of the superfoods that you might want to, that you might normally bring on vacation to keep your child healthy might make matters worse. So avoid those when you're on vacation. And again, I'm going to link to a list of neuroprovoking foods that you want to avoid during vacation time and in general as well. 
So um, glutamates is an issue. So avoid the crisps, the snacks, the processed foods, the highly uh, heated foods as well. So uh, protein powder is not a good idea either. Another thing you want to consider is to avoid copper. Now, many moms go gluten and dairy free, which is yes, you want to avoid that in vacation time and in general in the beginning phases of the turnaround because it can trigger behavioral issues due to the opioid effect. I'm describing this in other videos that I'm going to link to at the end of this one. But uh, gluten and dairy, yes, good idea to eliminate those. And the mistake that many make is that they then replace that with plant based products that are high in copper. So the nuts and the seeds, uh, the soy milk, those can actually exacerbate symptoms even more than dairy would have done. So notice when you eat something, if you see an intake or an increase in agitation and anger and anxiety and tantrums, it might be the copper. So just keep an eye out for that. And I'll link to the dangerous diets handout as well in the description below, whatever you're, wherever you're watching this podcast or listening to this podcast episode so that you can learn more about this. So what do you do instead? Well, it's really important to keep the blood sugar stable also because uh, an unstable blood sugar or low blood sugar actually it affects the glutamate receptors which are these tantrum trigger triggering neuroexcitatories they actually enhance them so that they just are on full alert and causing more symptoms so that's why you want to keep the blood sugar stable so just eat real foods meat berries, fruit, vegetables, nuts, and then keep the treats. Have a real high quality ice cream or some high quality cakes or that are gluten-free, of course, and keep it to after the meal. Don't eat these crisps or highly processed, highly uh, carb-rich foods in the breakfast time or lunch time, but have real foods at all main meal times and then if you want to do desserts do it after the meal because then the increase uh, the effect on the blood sugar will be minimal um, so that's what i wanted to say and then i want to say that remember the children will mimic us if you want your child to walk through the jungle you want your child to get healthier you need to get healthy as well and you need to get healthy first you cannot expect your child to follow you gladly and with trust if you are not implementing these healthy steps for yourself. And you're, if you're struggling with that, send me an email, contact at barefootautismwarriors.com and write help me in the subject line because I can help you get to a place where you actually lead by example. You're not going to be able to heal or change or understand your child to any other level that you've healed, understood and changed yourself. It's just the way it is. And when peace happens during vacation, anger comes up for you and the child. It was during a vacation time when we, we were sitting there with all this time on our hands and we, we were ill, overweight. I was severely overweight and depressed and anxious. My child was all over the place with autism symptoms. I was feeling so low. And it's when we are at peace and we step away from all the action that we can feel who we actually are, who have we become, and, and what, what kind of a mother am I, what kind of a partner am I, and that is actually really painful. And if we're used to numbing out that pain with alcohol or ice cream or screens or scrolling, it's actually painful to, to be on vacation. Because when we are at peace and when we have time, and actually when we start healing as well, anger comes up, anger from the past, anger from the grief of having a child that's struggling, anger, anger from your childhood maybe. So also allow your child to express anger that comes when we are silent, when, when, when you actually finally have time for this child. And then finally I wanna say, Many of these children actually express what we suppress and they can also react to when we are not treating ourselves well. So if we have another child before actually having healed or addressed our, child, our autistic child's symptoms or before we have actually healed ourselves, 
this child can express extreme anger and frustration because why are you choosing to take on even more responsibility before giving it back to yourself, giving yourself space and time and giving this child space and time to heal and feel better. So just notice that almost always if you have a second child, that's going to trigger some regression and plateaus. So what are you going to do in general? Here are my tips for a better vacation, for improving this before, during and after, and also where to go if you want more help. Okay, so let's remind ourselves how you can create a better vacation experience with less tantrums and regression and how you can deal with it if it happens and if it happens when you come home. Remember that chlorine pools, um, flying in airplanes, long distance travel, environments, stress, sounds, a lot of activity, kids clubs and screen time and also a lot of change when it comes to circadian rhythm and bedtime and meal times and diet can and will probably cause more problems when it comes to regression. So keep it low key, go to somewhere quiet instead. The more nature, beach, <laughs> trees and the less noise, the less screens and the less restaurant visits, the more calm your vacation will be. And remember that God wants you to rest. He wants you to enjoy. He wants you to, to, to feel peaceful after having worked for a long time on this project. So make sure that with your choices, you're actually maximizing the possibility of that actually happening for you so that the vacation won't be more stressful than actually staying home. Go to a place in nature or go to a quiet place. Stick to your bedtimes. Stick to meal times because the body is a clock and it prefers that we do, we eat and sleep at the same time, even during vacation. It's causing a lot of stress to the system if we stay up late and we are on screens late and we eat at restaurants where we're also exposed to all these glutamates and neuroexcitatories neuro and a lot of gluten, even in the gluten-free products. So that's one thing. Number two is make sure that you understand that your state of mind and your mindset and your nervous system will affect your child. So if you are in fight and flight, if you are unregulated, dysregulated and unhealthy and also inauthentic, meaning you want your child to live a life and eat foods that you are not actually currently implementing in your own life. And if you are in anger, and if you are head on a stick, completely detached from your body and uh, you're malnourished either because you're eating unhealthily or you're fasting and you're overperforming, your nervous system will be in fight and flight and your child will mimic your heart rate and your nervous system and that will negatively impact gut health, immune system and even digestion and detoxification pathways. So that will make behavior worse and then you tend to make bad decisions when you're in that state as well. You tend to get into angry outbursts and then blame the child for something that actually begins with you. The more you please, the more you give things that you don't have, the less boundaries you set, the less authentic you are and the less healthy and well-rested and well-nourished you are. The more bitter we tend to get, it's like we're painting ourselves into a corner and we are giving more than we can and we're not taking care of ourselves. So then we become bitter and we blame others for the fact that we didn't step up for ourselves. That's not really fair. So remember that as well. When these things happen, what you can do is that you... Re and, and also for prevention, you need to get outside every day and do your grounding, get sunlight to the skin, go to bed early and movement outside, crawling, creeping, having fun games, balls and throwing balls and cross coordination, jumping trampolines, getting those stress hormones out of the body. There's like yapping, stressful ADHD dog outside my window right now. But that is going to minimize and also deal with symptoms. And the more you can actually stay calm when these things happen, the better. If you prevent these blood sugar spikes by maintaining a healthy and nutritious 
breakfast, lunch and dinner with fats and meat and fruit, vegetables and berries, that's actually really going to be good for prevention as well. Maybe you can, you can bring some digestive enzymes and, and some of those, um, those uh, uh, enzymes that break down gluten and dairy, just in case you go to a restaurant and you are exposed to gluten and dairy without knowing it, bring those and have that as an emergency backup plan as well. So remember, the enemy wants you to feel hopeless and stressed and angry. He's there to kill, destroy and lie. And he loves when your, your family is having a horrible time and you're blaming each other for it. And there's a lot of chaos. So that voice inside that says, ah, you can eat ice cream all the time or let's just stay up late and let's just slack on our lifestyle. That's going to cause a lot of issues. And God wants you to stay on track, stay on that narrow path, even when you're on vacation, because that actually is the truth. That's what you are working towards. You can mess up a lot of things during a vacation, even in one week, if you abandon your values, direction and your path. So I hope this helps. And if you want help on top of this, if this is not enough for you and you want help step by step implementing this, going through the journey that took me eight years that I'm taking moms through now step by step and giving them the toolbox that I used when I went from all these horrible symptoms to none of them in uh, between 2004 and 2008. Send me an email, contact at barefootautismwarriors.com and tell me what your problem is or go to barefootautismwarriors.com and download some of my free guides to get started so that you can feel better and have a better vacation and a better life. See you soon.